Our podcast lead presenter, David Balkwell, has 30 years of certification assessment experience and has undertaken over 7,000 days of certification assessment. He worked full-time for BSI as operations manager for 10 years before setting up his own business carrying out independent certification assessment over the last 20 years with 19 accredited certification bodies. ISO Builder is a registered trademark of Bockwell Limited. All online content is protected by international copyright and the Trademarks Act 1994. ISO Builder Online is not responsible, liable, nor necessarily support views as expressed by our podcast presenters in any way. They are their own interpretation and views. We accept no liability for any content. Patrons should always source conformatory opinions regarding interpretations of management systems in relation to their own situation and intended use. No content is intended to be offensive in any way. This session is about the implementation of ISO 14001-2015. Environmental Management Systems. There are in fact plural because there isn't just ISO 14001 and never has been. Although most people are familiar with the term ISO 14001. Environmental Management System of course being typically abbreviated to EMS. The very first was back in 1992 when BSI published the world's first environmental management system standard, BS7750. And this typically followed a traditional management system structure. So it was not unusual for an organisation to implement an environmental management system that was based on procedures although at the time in the early stages in the early days BS7750 requested some rather unusual requirements to satisfy clauses for example that within the policy statement you should declare your environmental objectives at the time I worked for BSI and had done since 1989 and was there as an operations manager looking after 20 multi-industry discipline lead auditors uh, through for a 10 year period until 1999. So I remember well when in 1992 BS 7750 was introduced. It was introduced in response to growing concerns about protecting the environment. And prior to that, the next best or nearest that embedded environmental management was responsible care. To date, um, in terms of certifications to ISO 14001, certainly as far as the last ISO data is concerned in 2018 into 19, we're approaching 310,000 certifications worldwide. It's not, um, I guess, unreasonable to expect one of the highest, if not the highest, country that has environmental management system certifications is China at around 135, 36,000. In terms of certification industry sectors, areas uh, which have gained certification to ISO 14000, to an environmental management system, construction is the largest, as of the same date, around 54,000 certifications. So construction is, is the largest. Interestingly, the, the smallest sector being nuclear fuel at around 145 certificates. So thinking about the transition of 7750, it wasn't until 1996 when the first ISO 14001 document was released and it was prior to that that BS 7750 certainly was active in terms of accreditation. So that means that 
appointed accreditation bodies were accrediting certification bodies to carry out environmental management system certifications. And I was extremely active at that point carrying out certifications assessments to BS 7750 and also through to the migration then of certifications to ISO 14001 series. So ISO 14001 is based on plan do check and act. So in the same way as typical management systems in quality and health and safety the idea being that the modelling of Plan Do Check Act is that within the area of plan you recognise your policies, commitments, your objectives, your legal obligations and then move those expectations into underpinning and supporting the implementation of process through Do. So the operational control elements would be fulfilled at that part of Plan, Do, Check and Act. Within Check, you measure and monitor the processes and report on results. And Act, take actions to improve performance of the environmental management system based on a number of things. Not forgetting, of course, continual improvement, which looks back at learning points, improvements, and feeds those back into the front end of Plan. So like every other management system standard now, ISO 14001 currently sits at 2015. However, that's been quite a journey because in the early years of ISO 14000 there were many fundamental requirements and expectations of the standard that aligned with very little other than itself, ISO 14000. There was very little alignment and recognition towards ISO 9000 or at its time OH SAS 18001. With regards to the documents that currently exist in the ISO 14000 series have grown quite substantially from the early days of 2006 and through to the, uh, the current ISO 14001 to 2015 and namely they include ISO 14004 Environmental Management Systems General Guidelines on Inter Implementation, ISO 14005 Environmental Management System Guidelines for a Flexible Approach to Phased Implementation which has links back to BS 855 which was a scheme called ACORN um, ISO 14006 uh, Environmental Management Systems Guidelines for Incorporating Eco Design and ISO 14015 Environmental Management Environmental Assessments of Sites and Organisations. That's quite an interesting uh, member of the ISO 14000 family, ISO 14015. Because again, the early days of environmental management systems, to carry out a site review was a requirement of the standard. Although it wasn't an element that was audited in terms of the requirements of that initial review, that was expected to have been carried out as a baseline. So the idea being that you could always dip back into that to look at the first principles, the initial aspect evaluation that was carried out to determine the site organisations, environmental aspects and impacts. Of course that's fundamental to an environmental management system and sits within the plan element of plan, do, check and act. So there lies the, the history and some of the statistics around the requirements of environmental management systems to date. Of course ISO 14001 also now follows the requirements of Annex SL as does ISO 9001-2015 and ISO 45001-2018. 
There's one document that we mustn't forget in the in the history of environmental management systems, and that's EMAS, Eco Management and Audit Scheme. This was introduced a number of years back, primarily in um, 2000 and uh, sorry, 1990. ISO Builder Online, quality information for quality managers. ISO Builder is a registered trademark of Bockwell Limited. All online content is protected by international copyright and the Trademarks Act 1994. ISO Builder Online is not responsible, liable, nor necessarily support views as expressed by our podcast presenters in any way. They are their own interpretation and views. We accept no liability for any content. Patrons should always source conformatory opinions regarding interpretations of management systems in relation to their own situation and intended use. No content is intended to be offensive in any way. Balkwell Limited, Management Systems Consultancy Audit and Training. Contact us by email, davidbalkwell at balkwellltd.com or office at balkwellltd.com. Established in 1999.